Welcome to Mini Mastery. In this series, we're going to be painting my player's miniatures from primer to tabletop ready. We're going to be going through each player's mini and starting from just a primer mini and painting it through layer by layer, step by step. You'll be able to see the progress, follow along, and learn about the characters who are in our current campaign. Let's check it out. All right, welcome back as we finish out painting Jaw, the first player character that's going to have their mini painted for this adventuring group. And we've gotten really close to the end, but the last 10% is really about 90% of the time you spend on a mini. Just because the details get smaller and smaller and there's less surface area that you're focusing on. So today we're working on the sword and a little bit of metal bits at the belt. But with the sword, we already did a base coat and a first tone. So here we're just applying lighter and lighter shades to highlight the sword and the spacing that we want to look at is just getting smaller and smaller, lighter and lighter, so that we've got good transition. And of course, at first you're going to be able to see the transition lines pretty apparently, especially when the paint is wet. But if we do it right and apply it nice and evenly with thin coats, those transition lines will get smaller and smaller. And the illusion of the light hitting the sword will overpower those little transition lines, unless you're looking at it really close. And a little bit of editing here, and you can just see the lighter and lighter shades. And this is a non-metallic metal process, so we're not using any metallic paints. But we want to give the illusion that it's metal just by the way we highlight and shadow the parts of the swords. So this one here we'll focus on a lot just because it's the bigger of the two swords. But he does have another sword in his other hand. And each time we're applying paint we're just doing it in a smaller and smaller area and blending the colors so that the transitions are nice and smooth without big heavy lines. And really looking at how we perceive the light of hitting the blade. So on the upper end, it's coming from above, and then reflections from the lower end. So those highlights will be offset from each other. And then because it doesn't go to a smooth point, the top part of the blade is going to follow the back side where the light is hitting low on the blade. And then on the secondary blade, because some of it is shadowed underneath the arm, it won't be getting as much attention as the other just because so much of it is not seen. But the leading blade end is facing up, so it'll have highlights to the top. And the opposing blade side is kind of facing down to the ground, so it'll have the reflecting light points, so the highlights to the bottom of the blade. And just going through really carefully, nice thin layers, and you can see the details just getting smaller and smaller with each brush stroke, which is super key in good soft blending. Now each time we're laying down a coat, these are lighter and lighter, but they're from the same palette that we used. So this one did not have a lot of different shades of color, just because it's going to be a tabletop mini and not a display mini. The colors used are all going to be in the same family. So I used two grays and white, and then just lots of blends from the darkest up to the white and just getting gradually lighter and lighter. 
And because this is a hero figure, it will have pure white as the very final touch on the metal. That really makes it just explode with color. And if this were a display mini, the edges would also be edged in pure white. However, that's a lot of detail work and really takes a steady hand and um, actually quite a bit of time to make sure it's done right. And because these are going to be used on the tabletop or planned to be used on the tabletop, these are not quite to that dimension. However, they are really well painted so they can be used for display, just not for competition. And again, it's because I want my players to have minis that they're happy to display should they want to or use in the game once we get back to meeting in person and and playing around the table and for jaw the paladin i initially was going to do something a little different with the sword but because we're so early in the game it's just a basic standard paint job for the sword but I tried to call out a lot of details for the character that I've learned so far early in the game with colors and symbology for the god that Jaw is using for a patron. But more than anything, I wanted to really have something that was finished and, again, just good enough for a display, but solid enough for tabletop use. There you can really start to see the variances on that blade. It's giving it a lot of dimension, just going from that darker gray to the lightest grays. You, that illusion is already going through really, really well. And just smaller and smaller bits that receive paint. Taking our time, just making sure we've got good coverage, we're not overdoing anything. So lots of looking at this stage, as well as quite a bit of blending. And here just you can see how small those bits of color are being applied. And why it takes so much longer for the last little bits of the mini, just because the precision work is, is so minimal. But you have to be even more careful. You, there's nothing that you're going to be able to paint over top to be able to disguise any mistakes on these sections here. So as opposed to like the hands and the face where we knew the sword was going to be on top, if we, if we paint a little too aggressively, we know we're going to be covering those areas up with the next bits of paint. Here on the blades, there's nothing that's going to cover up any mistakes. So it's really about being as precise as possible making sure you've got the right amount of paint on the brush and that you've got nice clean blends, just smaller and smaller in detail and really making sure that the paint as it flows off that brush goes right where you need it to go. And there you can see real good on the blade the variances of color. Now that is not due to light, that's all due to paint. So just using the paint to give the illusion of those highlights. So that's non-metallic metals. It really makes it look like light reflecting and refracting off of metal. So it's a great technique, does fantastic job for our miniatures. And again, just going through the smallest amounts making sure that we're very purposeful in where we put the coloring and making sure that it makes sense to the light source that we plan to be above the mini. And then here goes just the very last bits of paint. All of that time and work to these little points here. Just being very, very careful in how we apply those final highlights. Those are what's going to give us the most 
brightest points. It, the sword itself, I think, looks pretty good. Now we're doing just the pure white, just dots of pure white where the light source is going to be shining off the blades. So the tiniest little hint is what you need, just where is the light hitting. And this part here is where generally on a competition mini you're going to be doing a lot more edging. But we're avoiding it for this one again just because of the time it takes. A little bit of edging there, I guess. I cheated a little bit. But on the sword itself, generally you'll take it down the center of the blade. But I think that's looking fantastic. Good transitions there. And fits the theme. Now we'll go through and do the final touches on the belt. And because these are little, almost like horns that come off that little gold skull we painted, these are going to get even fewer highlights than, or transitions, I guess, from the darkest gray to the light. So we'll only use about four, I believe, in total on here, where on the sword itself, I believe we used 12. So quite a bit of difference just based on size. And because these are such small details, they really don't stand out very much. They're not as noticeable, but for the player who's going to be receiving the mini, I want them to be able to look at it and really see some of those small details that we put in. It's kind of the treat for them to receive the miniature. So very important for me to do those kind of things. Now, going through, we'll do the gold highlights for the swords. This is the last step, um, provided we haven't missed anything. But going through and doing the gold bits for the hilts at this point. And these swords are fairly decorative, this one especially more so than the other, than the one in his offhand, but very decorative. Uh, they've got some filigree to them, as well as a very funky shape. So just being really careful on how I apply the paint. Of course, again, this is where you're going to cover up any mistakes from painting the hand and the lower parts of the blade. But you have to be very, very cautious because here again, there's nothing that's going to be covering up those gold bits. That's the very final piece. So making sure we've got good, even coverage using thin paints and just being super precise in how we lay those paints down. This is, of course, sped up this whole video um, to double speed. So I think overall it was just about an hour's worth of painting on the final two bits, I guess three bits, counting the belt. So Jaw currently does not use a sword, but the miniature comes with a sword. And initially I was thinking about changing it to a Morning Star, which is what the character in the game actually uses, uh, doing a bit of conversion to the miniature but there again that takes a lot more time and with that amount of time I wanted to get the figure that was initially picked and primed done to be able to gift to the player as quick as possible whether they use it on the table or just display it at home Either way, it doesn't bother me. And this is just a gift that I do for the players in kind of appreciation for them taking the time to play in the campaign that I run as a DM. But here, a little bit more off screen. I apologize for that. So we've just laid down the antique gold. We're going to do a wash now of a medium brown. And the challenge here on the wash over the thin coat is letting it dry. 
and making sure that the wash does not bleed through to other areas that are already painted because we're not going to be, of course, painting over top of anything that's washed. And there is an area here where that brown actually spread a little too thickly and got into an area that I did not want it to get to. So I had to do a little bit of cleanup. And for that I just used a different brush and rinsed it out and used it to pull paint off of the miniature. And then once it's pulled off, then it won't dry there and colorize any of the mini where it wasn't supposed to go. So this is the next one I'm going to do. I decided we're going to do Dave the Dwarf next. I like the mini. Uh, it does have a little bit of bending on the sword just because I've been using it on the table. But the Reaper Dwarfs are, are pretty well done. So he's going to come after Jaw. So getting back after Jaw, I let that brown wash dry. And now we're going back in with the Antique Gold. And we're just going to touch up the higher points. That brown is going to stay down low. So we're going to call out where are the high points on this part, leaving some of that tinted antique gold and brown shading in the lowest recesses. So knowing kind of the shape of the sword and how the light would play off of some of those, just the highlights. This is the first step. And then we'll just continue to lighten up to pure white here as well. And you'll see as I brush excess off on my thumb, the brighter and brighter colors as they come off. And when I wipe it off on my thumb, that's just getting excess paint off of the brush because I don't want too much to where it flows off too fast and comes off of everything. Uh, it also helps make sure that I don't have any blockage, any drying parts, because the paint dries fast on the brush, you want to make sure that the paint is staying as fluid as possible. So wiping it off just before applying really helps make sure that you don't get big lumps of paint onto your miniature. A lot of people utilize different techniques. I just do it right on my thumb or on my hand. And just continuing to highlight up. Now this is the antique gold blended with a bit of medium yellow. So just a little bit lighter color. Again, only about three quarters of what we painted previously is getting painted. Um, after another shade, that'll go down to half and then quarter of what we previously painted because the highlights get smaller and smaller the brighter they go, or the higher they go. So the higher percent you're painting over, you have better transitions, but it doesn't always look as realistic, especially when it's on the tabletop. So just looking at picking out details here, making sure that everything is getting the proper highlights and including all the little nooks and crannies. And we just continue highlighting up. With Jaw, again, we're still early in the game. I'd love to have a little bit more lore on that and be able to tell you a little bit more about the character. But because we're so early in the game, I'm still learning a lot about Jaw and how he is adapting into the gaming world. But I think the character represented in the mini is pretty decent done. It's got, of course, the half-elven features. It's got a bit of call-out in the dark armor to his darker background when he was a hired soldier. And it's got the chest plate with the symbol, the waterfall symbol of the god who helped him find some peace after the horrors of 
the wars and battle that he saw and the green which is the player's favorite color quite a bit of call outs to green um, which is also a peaceful color which is kind of cool it plays into the character pretty well and then just attention to detail because I think one of the call outs that I found really well about Jaws he has a good attention to detail he's very aware of his own morals and he is aware of the aspects that he wants to leave in his travels and in his dealings with others so it's a very strong character development that I've noted first and foremost it's going to be really interesting to see how Jaw continues to develop on the table and how he's able to um, possibly even change some of the character development steps from some of his other party members. So I'm really excited to see how that goes. The painting here, again, just smaller and smaller bits with lighter and lighter colors. You can see on that hilt on the primary sword pretty well how it goes from the darkest to the lightest. The blending is going, I'm pretty happy with it. While it's not perfect by any means, I think it's blending really well. And again, just checking out the highest points, the biggest detail that we want to do is have consistency. So following the same kind of pattern as we did with the sword and the armor, keeping the light reflecting from the ground, where would that hit, as well as from directly overhead. And smaller and smaller bits with lighter and lighter colors. That gives us the sheen as well as depth. Creates that illusion for the non-metallic metal. And the pure white on here will only go up to the highest point. So again, directly where that light is shining from. And we're just about there. Not quite yet, but we're getting really close to the final highlights and finishing out of jaw. Making sure both blades are matching the same paint scheme. And really turning it for every angle to make sure that we're flowing the paint well, as well as catching all of the details. We want to see them just to make sure that we're really looking at the right thing. And you see, it looks like a lot of shaking there, but it really isn't. Again, this is sped up just because otherwise this video would be so long. And we're just about to the final highlights now. It's getting so close. We're getting so close to having this paint job done. And then starting Dave, the best part I've enjoyed about this mini has definitely been working in some of those backstory pieces and finding a way to call out some of those details. I'm really hoping the player is happy with the mini. Of course, we've got to base it yet, but we're not going to do that in this video. This is all just about painting. But we're just about to the very final points now. I believe this is the final white that we're going to be putting on the gold. So the brightest point where the sun or light source would be hitting this miniature. You can see it's just dots really just small areas that get this pure white but it really makes the sword stand out once you see it on the table especially with other minis and there we go slowed it back down this is jaw our half elf paladin the first miniature that we have painted in our adventuring party next we're going to do dave but Welcome to completion. Next, we're going to spray it to seal it and then base it. And in the next video, then we're going to start painting Dave. Thanks for watching.
Thank you for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed. Here's an additional video that we feel you may like. And be sure to hit the subscribe button as we continue to grow and develop. Our first milestone of 25 subscribers is going to lead to five of those subscribers drawn at random to receive a free t-shirt. Make sure to share and help us grow. Thank you and be sure to comment below. Where will your adventures take you?